Gail Gago has, and she may not even know that she's got it, but she has a two-year-old residential tenancies paper that was submitted about four ministers ago that hasn't yet been picked up on. Can we get that released to the industry so we can have a look at that paper? And within that, understand, my understanding is that some of the red tape and some of the very old practices where residential tenancy is completely out, completely out of touch in certain areas are addressed. Can we get that released? Well, look, I'm not aware of the particular report. I'm happy to, to make some inquiries about that. But remember, for government, it's a, it's a tough balancing act. I mean, um, notwithstanding the fact that I also have tenants in my, uh, my properties, I mean, it, it, government has to make sure that it balances the need of the tenant in terms of that person's um, protection, security. And this is not about whether or not there are bad practices. It's about sensible, balanced regulation to make sure that tenants get a fair go. But equally, landlords and or their agents are also uh, treated properly and get a fair go. Just on that, and I don't want to harbour because I know it's not specific to your area, but a couple of common sense things. Firstly, I'm not sure whether you're aware, but a landlord's name and address and any um, move by the landlord, their new address within 14 days must, by law, be notified to the tenant. That's one. I mean, that's just incredible. You know, I, do you find that incredible? Well, I don't think it's unreasonable. Whether or not it creates a, um, an administrative nightmare, that may well be a valid point. Security, privacy issues? Well, so in other words, you're the owner of a property. If you moved home, by law, we have to notify your tenant where you've moved to within 14 days. Well, there was obviously a very good reason for that. Um, that doesn't particularly bother me, I might add. Um, but, you know, I, I don't see what the issue really would be with that, to be honest. Okay, second one, dishwasher. As a, just an example, if a dishwasher is not working when a tenant comes into the property, and it's put into the agreement that it does not work and it will not work and it's not part of the tenancy, so therefore you're not paying. This, this the scenario where, by law, you still have to repair that, that dishwasher, irrespective of the agreement going in. Well, I suppose what I would say, and I, you know, Foley's never short of sticking his neck out here. I, um, I have investment properties for which I'm a landlord. I also lease a property and I'm a tenant. And there are nuances and disappointments uh, and, uh, frankly, things that annoy the living daylights out of me. But I have to accept that's the life of being a tenant. Uh, I've actually can see the argument from both sides of the fence, given I'm both a landlord and a tenant. And I can see why there are certain conditions in the tenancy law to ensure the tenant gets a fair go. Would you do one thing live and on Took TV and at least ask the Minister to have a look at that? Oh look, anything that you've asked me, Anthony, we'll get a uh, uh, transcript of this interview and I'm more than happy to take those issues up with the Minister responsible. Getting back in the theme of red tape, electronic lodgement of government forms and details, is that high on the agenda? Look, it is. I think that's one of the great areas where we can really take a quantum leap in doing away with a lot of paperwork, uh, resources, cost to government, cost to business, cost to consumers is by strongly embracing the online system of, uh, of dealing with government interaction by way of forms. Now, we're doing some early work on that. Uh, we're probably a little bit behind the curve on that, but that's a good uh, opportunity in the year, or the next 6, 12, 18 months ahead, to vastly streamline the way government interacts with both business and consumers. Now, Mandy, um, the residential tenancies, our experience with them has been fantastic, hasn't it? Yes, it has, Anthony. I mean, they're very helpful. Whenever we, we've got to ask questions, very helpful with us. But they are handcuffed by the Act, and so the Act is what we're really on about. The Act is the thing that we're trying to break open and actually modify it and start to allow the residential tenancies branch and the industry and the, buy and the tenants and the landlords to just start to have a bit easier relationship with each other. Um, so that I'm hoping they will get that report out, have a look at it. A lot of work's gone into it apparently. I've only been told about that third hand, but my understanding is it's sitting in there. Just love to have a look at it and see if there's some common sense in there. To the electronic forms though. 
Oh, Anthony, that would save, you know, in man hours, 30 hours, let alone the trees and the postage. You know, and we're meant to be green and they're certainly not promoting that at the present moment. We're quite archaic in the way we do that. Well, the good news is that we've got a commitment that they'll at least have a look at it. And of course, the reason we're doing it this time of the year and this time uh, in history is that we've got an election coming up. So let's hope uh, everyone does just have some common sense and have a bit of a look at it. Now, talk about um, uh, people that we've interviewed and one of the best interviews is with Mark Bodicote, the public trustee. So we're gonna go and see his third and final segment, find out what the public trustee does um, because most people really have no idea and they're the largest seller of property in this state. So it's important to understand their place in the market and what they do. Uh, so we speak to Mark and we look at some properties and we go behind the blinds.